Welcome. As your first introduction to vPython, I wanted to show you how we can use it as a handy calculator. So first off, I'm going to type print5, and what that will do is after I run the program, it prints out 5 in the output window. But I can go ahead and have it do calculations for me. So maybe if I do 5 times 2, watch what it prints. It does the calculation and it prints out 10, which is great. It does addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, right? So 5 plus 2 is going to be 7. And it also follows order of operations, so you have to be careful. So if I wanted to do 5 plus 2 divided by 5 plus 2, you might think, oh, that should be 1. But it's not because it follows order of operations. So what it's going to do is it's going to do 2 divided by 5 first, which is 2 fifths, and then it's going to take the 2 fifths and add it to 5 and add it to 2. So that's why we get our 7.4. If I wanted to do 5 plus 2 divided by 5 plus 2, I'm going to have to put parentheses around my numerator and my denominator, and now we can get our 1. So be careful with order of operations. There are some mathematical constants built in, like pi. So it knows what pi is if I type in pi. You can also multiply, divide, and add and subtract to pi. So if I, or not to like, like to pi, but. Uh, so here, if I do two pi like this, I'm gonna get an error because it does not understand implicit multiplication. Anytime you want to multiply, you have to be explicit. You have to say 2 star pi. Every time you want to do multiplication, you have to put the star there. It won't assume that two things together are supposed to be multiplied together if you don't have the star there. So if I run it now, bingo, 6.28319 twice pi. You can also do exponents. So if I wanted to do 5 squared, so you can't do that. I'm going to get an error. Oh, actually, I get something else. I get 7. That has this different meaning in Python, the caret symbol. To do a power, you have to do double star. So 5 star star 2 would be squared. If I did 5 star star 3, that would be a cubed, right? So 5 times 5 times 5 should be 125. And it is. 5 squared would be 25, which it is. You can also do square root. So if I do SQRT and the number I want to take the square root of inside the parentheses after SQRT, I should get the square root of 25, which is 5. We get our five. Um, to make things easier, we can assign variables and give them uh, numerical values. So let's say I had a rectangle and the length of the rectangle is L. I'm going to use a capital L so it doesn't look like a one. Let's say the length was 5, and the width of the rectangle is 2. So I could say L equals 5 and W equals 2. And then if I want to find the area, I could say something like area equals length times width. And then when I go to print, remember before I had 5 times 2, I can just type an area here, and it will give me our 10. And you might be saying, well, that's a lot of typing to do when I could have just typed in 5 times 2 and all those extra lines. I didn't really need those lines. In that simple example before, that's true. 
but as our programs get more complicated, it'll be um, easier to have everything set up as variables and our calculations as variables as well. So let's say in addition to finding the area, we wanted to find the perimeter. So I can make a variable, I'll call it perim, and the perimeter is equal to length plus length plus width plus width, or I could even boil it down to two times the length plus two times the width. And again, it's gonna follow order of operations, so it's gonna do this two times the length first. So that's gonna be 10, and then it's gonna do the two times the width next, and that's gonna be four, and then it's gonna do 10 plus four, and we should get 14. Excellent. Sometimes we might wanna have text next to our output number to, to say what we're outputting on the, when we look at the output window. Maybe somebody isn't gonna be able to you know, read through all your code and understand what's being printed at the end. So it's always nice to have something like uh, a statement that might say the perimeter is quote, comma. And now notice that any text that I wanna have printed out, the text has to be in quotes. Because if you don't have the quotes, here, let me run it with the quotes first. You see it says the perimeter is 14. If I don't have the quotes, I'm gonna get an error because it is going to think that these are variables, like perim is a variable. And I'm gonna get an error message, unexpected token name, meaning it's thinking it's a variable and it doesn't see anywhere that the, you haven't said anywhere like the is equal to something. Right? And it's, it's not a variable, it's just text that we want to have displayed. And then you do need a comma. And then you can string together multiple things. So I can have text, a variable, I could have more text after that or another variable after that. So maybe I want to have units there. Right, because the perimeter is going to be in meters for units. So now if I run it again, right, the perimeter is 14 meters. I can have it print out the area as well. Copy pasting sometimes helpful, but just make sure you copy and paste and change everything that needs to be changed. Um, this here, the caret, I know it gave us an error before, but now it's inside quotes, so it's just going to display it as text. And then we should get the area for both, 14 and 10. And then if I need to make a change, like let's say I wanted to make the width 50 and the length 25, I can just go ahead and change them once up here, and then the area and the perimeter calculations will automatically follow, which is great. I don't have to go and change it, change the 50 and the 25 every time they show up. And perfect, right? Now my perimeter and area have changed just by me changing up here and not having to worry about the other lines of code because we have variables set up. Now let's add one more calculation. Let's find the length of the diagonal for our rectangle. So the length of the diagonal, right, it's gonna go from one corner to the next. Um, and essentially, if you picture a rectangle with the line going through the diagonal, then essentially the diagonal is the length of the hypotenuse and where the legs of that right triangle would be the length and the width. So we have to do the Pythagorean theorem with the length and the width so that we can get the length of the hypotenuse, which is the length of the diagonal. So if you remember the Pythagorean theorem, we're gonna have to take the square root of the length squared plus the width squared. So we're gonna do the square root of L squared, so L star star two, plus the width squared, star star two, and we're gonna get all of that in parentheses. Uh, I'm gonna change this to be 
three and four for the length and the width. So that way I know that the diagonal should have a length of five. And we'll do print. The diagonal is diag, and that's in meters. We run it, and boom, there we go. Diagonal is five meters. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.